Now I'd like to show you how you can use VitaScene as a video filter, so a static filter. And to do this, I'll get rid of my title for the minute. I'll move it to the right. And now I'm left with my video clip. And this one doesn't suit me for this demonstration. So I'll simply replace it with a different clip, with this one here. So on this clip, I'd like to use VitaScene as a static filter. And so I have to look for it here in the ProDAD filter section. And from there, I can simply drag and drop VitaScene onto my clip. There's a default setting for the filter that is active straight away. But in my case, I don't want to use this. I'd like to choose a different filter. So I'll go to the information palette. And then with my clip selected, I'll open the setup dialog for the VitaScene filter. VitaScene opens again. And this time I'm in the filter section of the presets. So here I have all the presets for the static filter effects. And the best thing to do here is for you to simply look around and see what kind of filters there are. Select a category and try the various filters. What we can see in the background is my EDIUS preview window. I can actually leave both windows open in parallel. So the EDIUS window and the VitaScene window. And this means I can see the preview in my EDIUS window. If you have a fast computer and a good graphic card, then you can do all of this in real time. If using VitaScene 2, which is available as an update, then it goes even quicker. But we'll discuss this at the end of this chapter. So as mentioned, the best thing is to look around a bit and try a variety of filters out. And then you get a good idea of what effects are possible. This filter is set up to be very subtle. And if I need to adjust it, then I can go down here and adjust the effect settings. And so the whole thing isn't animated, I have to deactivate the keyframes. Now I can adjust, for example, the length of these light rays. Or I can adjust the position of the virtual light source, which is quite interesting. And if I change this, then we can see that the rays of light are suddenly coming from a different position. So, in the frame of this bonus chapter, it wouldn't make much sense to discuss all of the parameters. But as mentioned, the best thing is simply to select an effect and adjust various parameters. In doing so, I think you'll get a fairly good idea of what individual effects can do. This one, for example, is a glitter effect. And this relates to the brightness in a specific image. And it works best on an image where there are spots of bright areas. Here, in the settings, I can adjust the threshold. And with this, I can specify from what level of brightness the glitters will start being created. With that, you can optimize it a little bit to achieve the desired results. And just as with the transition effects, if you want to accept everything, you simply go here and choose Save the Project and Return to Editing Program. 